Hello all. Welcome back to Vitu e Sikshana program. I, Dr. Sasmita Mahapatra, is here to take the second module of microwave and antennas. Uh, that is, the second module is microwave network theory and microwave passive devices. So, till now, we have taken the classes in that we have almost finished all the microwave network theory and the characteristics related to it the S matrix, the S parameters, and all those things. Now with the fifth class, let us start for the microwave passive devices. Now when we tell microwave passive devices, so what all we are going to uh, talk in this, or what all we are going to cover are coaxial connectors and adapters, webguide teeth, magic teeth, attenuators, and fetch sectors. So coming for the first, type of microwave passive device that is coaxial connectors and adapters. So basically when we tell coaxial connectors they are divided into two categories. So one is a male and one is a female. Now what is a male connector? So it has basically a center conductor which is a probe. So you would have seen such a connection somewhere so center, we will have a connector where we have it something like a probe. So let me show you certain male connector. So if you can see this connector, so here at the center, we will have a probe kind of thing that is one rod coming out. We have a rod coming out. So this type of connector where the rod is coming out, it is a male conductor, okay? And something, uh, the other one is a female connector or we call it usually a jack. So if you see in this, if we'll, uh, you can see in this, so at the center, we have a hole. We don't have any probe coming out. So this side, if you are seeing, it is a probe which is coming out, that is a male connector. And this side, if you are seeing, it is a hole. There is no probe coming out. So basically, this, is, this type of connector is known as a female connector. Now, Coming for male connectors, as you can see in the pictures, so here, this is a connector which consists of a male connector as well as a female connector. So this side is a male connector where you can see the projected probe coming out, the rod coming out, and this side is, the other side is with a hole. So basically we have a point where we can fix the male connector to the female connector. So this is just like a hole. So this is my female connector. So this is again the example of a male connector where you can see the rod, the probe coming out. This is a male connector and these all are male connectors. So depending on which type of cable we are going to use, whether it is a BNC, SMA, usually the features of the male connector is going to the diameter is going to change. But basically the construction is something like this. It is a connecting device where we can connect the multiple devices or the source and the cable and all those things. And this connector is having like this configuration where you have a rod at the center. That is a male connector. Okay. Coming for some of the female connectors, as you can see, you have a hole connection here. You have a hole. So basic connector, this is the basic structure of a female connector where we can usually put a male connector. It comes, it is associated with a hole type of structure, okay? So these are certain examples of female connectors where we have different, different connectors for BNC cable, SMA cable, all those things. Now, basically, when we go for microwave coaxial connectors, let it be male or female, depending on the type of structure, we have almost 12 type of coaxial connectors. So coming for the first type of coaxial connector, uh, that is one APC 2.4. Now you can see I have written APC 2.4, 3.5, 7, all those things. So when I write 2.4, 3.57, this all are related to the physical diameter of the connector. Okay, now coming for the first one, the APC 2.4 is one 50 ohm connector. So it has one characteristic impedance of 50 ohm. Usually you know that uh, the transmission line that is simple. If I'm taking a signal probe or a signal generator probe or CRO probe, all this transmission line has a characteristic impedance either 50 ohm, mostly 50 ohms. In certain cases, it is 75 ohms. 
So going with the standard connection, we always try to have a proper impedance matching so that we should not have any reflection while using any passive device or while using any connectors or anything. So at that time, usually we go for 50 ohms as the standard characteristics impedance, okay? So coming for the first coaxial connector, it is APC 2.4. We have here the transmission line, the connector with the characteristics impedance of 50 ohm. And it is also known as OS50 connector. Mainly it is designed to work for extremely high frequency up to 50 gigahertz. Then coming to the next one, APC 3.5. So again, the diameter varies, the physical structure varies. And according to that, the names are going to change from 2.4 to 3.5. And it provides repeatable connection and has very low VSWR. VSWR, I feel all of you must be knowing, you have studied it in module one. So whenever we have any device or any connector or any uh, coaxial connector, then if you have a reflected signal, generated then the reflected signal superimposed on the more of the incident signal results in a standing wave now in that standing wave somewhere we have voltage is maximum somewhere we have voltage is minimum and if we are taking the ratio of maximum voltage to minimum voltage that results in uh, bswr okay so basically we don't prefer to have a bswr that is bswr should be low in a masked condition it should be low so this connector, APC 3.5, can give us a very low VSWR, that is, it can provide us a matched condition. And the operating frequency here goes up to 34 gigahertz. Okay, so coming for the next connector, it is APC 7. Again, it comes in the same category, only thing is the diameter is going to change, the physical structure is going to change. And it mainly provides coupling mechanism without a male or female distinction. It can couple anything, either a male or female. And it has got very accurate measurements for 50 ohm characteristics impedance. It has got a very accurate measurement. And here the VSWR again is very low and it can work up to a frequency of 18 gigahertz. Okay, so I'd like to show you some of the APC 2.4, APC 3.5, the jack looks something like this. So that depends on the diameter that we are going to use. According to that, the coaxial connector names are changed. Now, coming to some other, um, after APC, we have got BNC. So mostly the used cable or the connector that we are using in the lab for CRO or for signal generator, is a BNC connector. Okay. So basically this BNC connector is named according to the name you can see it is Barnett Navy connector but it is so named because it is designed for mainly uh, military system applications in Navy and it was introduced during the second world war and the operating frequency was low for this it is up to 4 gigahertz. And it can accept a flexible cable diameter up to 3.5 millimeter, mostly used for frequency less than one gigahertz. Mostly we use it in the lab, okay? And suitable for characteristics impedance 50 ohm or 75 ohm. So the one which I'm holding here, you can see this is a BNC connector. Okay, this side it is a BNC connector. This type of connector is known as a BNC connector. Fine. Coming for the next connector, the SC medium sized older type connector. So it is suitable again for a characteristic impedance of 50 ohm. And it is somewhat larger than BNC. Okay, the connector is usually the diameter is bit, BNC itself is larger. And this SC medium sized is still larger than that. And it can be used up to 0 to 11 gigahertz, okay? And coming for the next connector, it is C Barnett connector, which is a twist and lock. So even this BNC also, you can see, we have to put it, twist, then it gets locked to the CRO or to the signal generator. It is something like that connection. 
put it twist then it will get locked you cannot remove again if you have to remove again twist then you have to remove it so that is your c bar neck twist lock version of ac connector again coming for the next type of connector it is your sma connector which is a sub miniature a connector now this connector is again used for 50 ohm transmission line the characteristic impedance is 50 ohm it's a threaded connector okay so bnc is put and lock and this is your bnc and what i'm holding in left hand side is a sma okay usually you can see the diameter of both you can compare the right hand side is bnc the left hand side is sma so usually the sma connector diameter is less and it is as i told it is a twisting type so if i show you only a sma connector so this is one sma connector okay this is one sma connector and if you see this connection we don't put and lock it is rather a threaded type connector so i'll show you if you have a connector something like this so the screw it has to be threaded means you have to put it as a screw okay we have to put it as a screw so like this connector this is a sma connector the side we call it as a sma connector again the frequency range the operating frequency range for this connector is going to be high it is around 18 to 26.6 gigahertz okay and coming for the next connector it is ssma connector so it is still more miniaturized compared to sma connector the characteristic impedance goes up to 50 ohms and it operates for a frequency of 26.5 gigahertz up to 240 gigahertz it's flexible up to 40 gigahertz then the next one snc connector it has a characteristic impedance 50 ohm to 70 ohm connectors and it is again smaller than sma connectors and the frequency goes up to 7 to 10 gigahertz now these are the connectors whatever i discussed so you can see depending on the frequency depending on the diameter and the construction of these connectors we have the applications different different applications for them so first one is one apc connector and the next one is a ac jack connector it's a jack connector and it is a tnc connector and then we have the sma plug so whatever the sma thing i am showing this one is the sma connector so it is a sma plug that that is a sma plug connector so and next one is a bnc connector a uh, bnc connector usually is your cro probe is a bnc connector and then tnc jack connector okay then these are certain microwave connectors so the one which is shown here the sma connector is the one which i am holding here i'll just show you the exact one so this is the one this is the one what i am holding here and it is shown there and like that you have double reach web guide sma jack okay so when you are trying to connect the web guide to two inputs so you have a sma jack there and sometimes we have the plugs and standard web guide many types of connectors we have okay then coming for adapters what are adapters basically it is a interfacing device okay adapters are interfacing device and it is used between two connectors when we have two connectors we use in between is one adapter now this adapter should be able to connect to male connector also and female connector also the adapter should be something like this which is connected to male as well as female connector or in between two male two female something like this so according to that you can see these are the coaxial adapters diagram that you can see so this is one sma male to sma female if you can see this side is sma male and this side is sma female i will show you practically this is the one which i am holding so one side if you see we have a point coming here this one side if you see a rod is coming out that is my sma side sma cable side and the other side we have a pole so the next one if you see in the diagram both the sides it is female connector we can connect both the sides we can connect the female connector and we here also we have both the sides male connector 
and this is a right angle so how usually we will connect i'll just do it and show you so this is one sma cable and the sma cable has a threaded structure and this is my coaxial connector or cable what i have and this is the adapter what i have so basically i can put it like this and rotate it okay now this adapter i have is a male female adapter this side is my male this side is female and this is my sma cable sma connector that i have i have connected here then again i have one more adapter here which is a female to female okay so this side i have here this side is ending with the male so always remember to a male we will connect a female connector so this side again can be connected by this so this is my female connector which is connected to the male connector okay now if i want to connect something else something extra then uh, what i have again here you can see since it is a female to female so this side again i can have one male connector so this is again my cable this is usually called a bnc to sma cable so one side it is a bnc one side is sma and both are male connectors so here i have got this is the adapter which is female to female so this side is female so this side i can put a male connector so that i can make a connection between them okay so this way we can make a connection so this is the way we have so first i have a sma connector then i have a male to female adapter then i have a female to female adapter both sides female then i have again a cable which is sma and the side it is bnc so basically we want this coaxial connectors and adapters for making a connection in a uh, network like uh, with different 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 passive devices and uh, with coaxial cables and all when we are going for connections so basically we want this connectors and adapters okay so practically when you go to lab try to see all these connectors and adapters and try to know that structure and mainly depending on the operating frequency these adapters and connectors their structure is going to change and the diameter the main the size is going to change it's going to vary so it wholly depends on the wavelength okay so according to the wavelength these things are designed right so that's all for today's class and in the next class we'll be studying regarding some more passive devices which are going to be used in the microwave circuitry so uh, we will have some more devices like next class we'll see the attenuators phase shifters and the key junctions okay so thank you for today see you soon